His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, the Supreme Commander of the Armed Forces, received at Safriya Palace the Commander of the United States Naval Forces Central Command, Commander of the U.S. Fifth Fleet, and Commander of Combined Maritime Forces, Vice Admiral George Wyckoff. His Majesty welcomed the Vice Admiral and congratulated him on his new appointment, wishing him further success. His Majesty praised the strategic relations between Bahrain and the U.S. and hailed the cooperation and coordination in all fields, especially the military and defense. His Majesty affirmed that the bilateral relations are based on long history of trust, respect and mutual keenness to achieve the aspired goals for the benefit of both countries and their peoples. His Majesty praised the role of the U.S. in cooperation with friendly and allied countries in maintaining security, navigation and trade in the region and overcoming challenges as well as enhancing global peace. The Vice Admiral expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty the King for his keenness to enhance bilateral partnership and defense cooperation. He praised the role of the Kingdom and its contributions and its keenness to cooperate with the international community and maintaining regional peace and stability. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received at Safriya Palace the Italian ambassador to the kingdom, Paola Amade. His Majesty welcomed the ambassador and highlighted the historic bilateral relations and cooperation in all fields. His Majesty praised the bilateral relations and affirmed keenness to further enhance them in all fields to benefit both countries and their peoples. His Majesty praised the efforts of the ambassador in enhancing the bilateral relations, wishing her further success. The ambassador expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty the King for his keenness to further enhance the bilateral relations and cooperation in all fields in the interest of both countries. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa issued Royal Decree 8 of 2024 establishing a directorate at the Survey and Land Registration Bureau based on a proposal by the Prime Minister and following the approval of the Cabinet. The decree stipulates the establishment of the Directorate of Land Affairs at the SLRB. The new directorate shall report to the Director General of Land Registration. His Majesty the King also issued Royal Decree 9 of 2024 restructuring the Ministry of Information based on a proposal of the Minister of Information and following the approval of the Cabinet. According to the Royal Decree, the Ministry of Information shall be restructured as follows. The Minister of Information shall be responsible for First, Strategic Planning and Projects Directorate Second, Director General of Bahrain News Agency at the rank of Assistant Undersecretary Third, Assistant Undersecretary for News and Regulatory Affairs shall be responsible for News Directorate and Regulatory Affairs Directorate. Fourth, Undersecretary of the Ministry of Information who shall be responsible for Human and Financial Resources Directorate, Assistant Undersecretary for Technical Affairs shall be responsible for Technology and Broadcasting Directorate, Transmission and Outside Broadcasting Directorate, Assistant Undersecretary for Radio and Television who shall be responsible for Radio Directorate, Television Directorate, Sports Media Directorate, Creativity and Electronic Media Directorate. Royal Decree 94 of 2019 on restructuring the Ministry of Information shall be repealed. His Majesty the King also issued Royal Decree 10 of 2024 restructuring the National Communication Center, the NCC, based on a proposal by the Prime Minister and following the approval of the Cabinet. Under the decree, the NCC shall be restructured as follows. The Chief Executive Officer at the rank of Undersecretary shall, be, shall oversee First, Directorate of Analysis and Media Follow-up. Second, Directorate of Human and Financial Resources. Third, Director of General of Global Communication Office at the rank of Assistant Undersecretary, who shall be responsible for Strategic Communication Directorate, Global Relations Directorate. Fourth, Deputy CEO for Communication Operations at the rank of Assistant Undersecretary, who shall oversee Planning Directorate, Press Office Directorate, Digital Media Directorate. Fifth, Deputy CEO for Shared Communication Services at the rank of Assistant Undersecretary, who shall be responsible for Media Support Directorate, Shared Communication Services Coordination Directorate. A number of communication directors shall be appointed and transferred to be in charge of shared communication services at government entities. Any text that conflicts with the provisions of this royal decree shall be repealed. His Majesty the King also issued Royal Decree 11 of 2024, amending Article 1 of Decree 49 of 2012 on restructuring the Civil Service Bureau based on a proposal by the Prime Minister following the approval of the Cabinet. A new paragraph 6 shall be added to Article 1 of Decree 49 of 2012 on restructuring the CSB. 
It reads as follows. Six, Director General of Human Resources, Shared Services, who shall be responsible for. Shared Human Resource Services Directorate, Human Resources Operations Directorate. A number of designated human resources directors shall be transferred to government agencies to assume the task of shared human resources services. His Majesty also issued Royal Decree 12 of 2024, appointing a Vice Chairman of the High Urban Planning Committee, based on the proposal of the Prime Minister and following the approval of the Cabinet. Sheikh Salman bin Abdullah Al Khalifa shall be appointed as Vice Chairman of the High Urban Planning. His Majesty also issued Royal Decree 13 of 2024, appointing a President of the Survey and Land Registration Bureau, based on a proposal by the Prime Minister and following the approval of the Cabinet. The Royal Decree stipulates the appointment of Basim bin Yagub al Hamar as President of the SLRB. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa attended the International Customs Day celebration held under his patronage. His Royal Highness was accompanied by Chairman of the Board of Trustees of the Isa bin Salman Educational Char Charitable Trust and Chairman of the Board of Directors of Tamkeen, His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. Upon arrival at the Public Security Officers Club, His Royal Highness was received by the Minister of Interior, General Sheikh Rasha bin Abdullah Al Khalifa and a number of senior officials. His Royal Highness noted the importance of advancing the development of sectors that support economic growth in commercial and tourism, as well as logistic services, to drive economic diversification efforts. He highlighted the importance of the implementation of the Kingdom's strategies, programs, development plans, and the continued efficiency of e services to further the Kingdom's comprehensive development led by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. His Royal Highness launched the Customs Affairs Virtual Customer Service Center, which contains seven communication channels and provides 22 services. His Royal Highness noted the efforts of the customs personnel in achieving the aspirations of the customs authority, one of the vital front lines in safeguarding the Kingdom of Bahrain. He expressed his gratitude to the Minister of Interior, the Ministry's personnel and the employees of the Customs Affairs for further developing the customs services and keeping up to date with the latest developments.
His Royal Highness viewed a film which outlined the launch of the 2024-2027 Strategic Plan for Customs Affairs. The new plan will continue to build on the previous plan's successes, especially the approach of integration with the government program, the Bahrain Economic Vision 2030 and the directions of the World Customs Organization, in line with the Kingdom's Sustainable Development Goals. His Royal Highness was briefed on the dashboard project, which enables senior management to analyze work-related information and review performance indicators, making decision-making more efficient. This was followed by another briefing on the Unified Customs Clearance Center, which was activated a year ago and works around the clock to provide electronic customs services related to the fields of export and import and unified procedures at all custom ports as well as the Virtual Customer Service Center. His Royal Highness honored several ministers and heads of institutions in appreciation of their roles and contributions to the growth and development witnessed by the Kingdom under the leadership of His Majesty the King. For his part, the Minister of Interior, on behalf of himself and the Ministry's personnel, expressed gratitude to His Majesty the King's support of the Ministry's comprehensive development. The Minister also expressed gratitude to His Royal Highness for his patronage and expressed the Ministry's commitment to implementing the new strategy over the coming years. He highlighted the importance of utilizing modern technology and te techniques to protect Bahrain's borders, develop the capabilities of the Kingdom's customs and enhance travel and trade by facilitating procedures and following best practices. The minister expressed his pride in Bahrain customs in providing highly efficient customs services that contribute to supporting the national economy. The president of Customs Affairs, Sheikh Ahmed bin Hamad Al Khalifa, noted that Bahrain's approach to its customs development has become a pioneering example to be emulated globally. He affirmed Team Bahrain's commitment to overcoming challenges, adding that Customs Affairs has become flexible and adaptable to changes, allowing creative thinking and the adoption of innovative solutions. He noted that 97% of the 2021-2024 strategies has been completed. The representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs and Chairman of the Board of Trustees of the Royal Humanitarian Foundation, the RHF, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, received RHF newly appointed Secretary General Sheikh Ali bin Khalifa Al Khalifa. His Highness congratulated Sheikh Ali on obtaining the Royal Trust, praising his experience and competence and the sincere efforts he made during his work in the foundation, which extended for more than 15 years, wishing him success in his new duties. For his part, the Secretary General extended his gratitude and appreciation to His Majesty the King, expressing his great pride in the lofty Royal Trust and in the sound directors of His Majesty, which will be a beacon in performing his duties. Sheikh Ali bin Khalifa also expressed his thanks to His Highness's continuous support and keenness to continue implementing the Advancing and Foundation's development plans. He stressed that the RHF is keen to implement His Highness's directives aimed at promoting and supporting humanitarian work in accordance with the lofty royal vision in a way that contributes to achieving a decent life for orphans and widows in addition to the groups benefiting from the foundation services in Bahrain and supporting the afflicted and brotherly and friendly countries. The representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, patronized the closing ceremony of the National Project Lama in the presence of the Secretary General of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, Ayman Lamayyad, Youth Affairs Minister Rawan Tawfiqi, Minister of Works, Engineer Ibrahim Al Hawaj, representatives and supporting and participating parties, and Lama participants. His Highness Sheikh Nasser affirmed that the graduates of the project are an inspiring role model for their peers among the Kingdom's youth and motivators for them to present the qualities of 
of determination and diligence to participate with their efforts in building a more sustainable and prosperous future for Bahrain. His Highness pointed out that His Majesty the King believes in the promising Bahraini youth energies and the necessity of giving them the opportunity to participate in the progress of the kingdom amid the interests of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister who placed young among the youth among priorities of the government's work. يعطيكم الف عافيه يا شباب على هذا الاداء المميز اللي دائما ما نحن نشوفه منكم في الدفعات السابقه واللي قبلكم واحنا نعرف حتى اللي بعدكم يعني هذه الامانه في رقابنا اذا احنا نشيلها على هذه الروح بهذا الاخلاص بهذا الحب لهذا الوطن ما في شك ان نسخر كل امكانياتنا وكل قوتنا وكل طاقتنا لخدمة هذا البلد وهذا الملك اللي بنى هذا البلد وبنى وسخر هذه الإمكانيات لنا كلنا فلازم نعرف أن إحنا ما عندنا عذر أبدا سواء كان مواطن البحريني أو كان المسؤول لأن إحنا نوفر الأرضية ونفتح الأبواب بقدر المستطاع ولكن الجهد الباقي عليكم أنتوا اليوم أثبتوا انتوا اليوم حطيناكم في فحوصات يعني انا اتابعها عن كثافه وعن قرب وعرف انه يعني اللي مريتوا في شيء يعني انتوا اكتشفتوا امور ما كنتوا تعرفونها. هذه الفكره من البدايه يوم اتذكر يوم جلست مع ايمن وقلت له البحرين فيها ناس لامعه لكن ما اعتقد ان احنا لحد الان رايحين نقنصهم ولحد الان احنا مو بقادرين ان احنا نبرزهم فكان حاس انا بالمسؤوليه ان احنا لازم علينا ان نبحث وثم ننمي ونصقل قدراتهم ثم نرسلهم لخدمه هذا الوطن وخدمه اسمهم وخدمه امانتهم وهذه دين لاهالينا اللي ربونا واللي تعبوا علينا واللي صرفوا علينا عشان يوم من الايام يشوفون ولدهم مثلكم لما انت ترجع على بيتك اليوم وقبل لا تنام لازم تفكر في شيء واحد هل استحق هذه النومه او لا اذا كان الجواب نعم روح واذا كان الجواب لا ما اقول لكم يعني واصلوا لي باكر لكن ضروري نومتك اليوم الثاني تكون مطمئن ومرتاح انك انت عوضت. اليوم احنا دخلنا سباق. وهذا السباق لازم احنا نكون مع المقدمه. ومنافسين. يعني انا دائما عندي نظريه قبل لا ادخل اي سباق سواء كنت شخصيا ولا عندي فريق ولا كان عندي منتخب. انا ما اروح متوقع بس الفوز، لا انا متقبل الفوز والخساره. لكن اللي ابي اني افوز واذا خسرت ابي اخسر بصعوبه. هذه ارتاح اما اذا خسرت بسهوله هني عاقب نفسي فانتم اليوم ما تتوصون انتم النوعيه اليوم اللي احنا نبحث عنها في قدراتكم في حل المشاكل في قدراتكم في كيف ان انتم اليوم تفكرون خارج النطاق المالوف في قدراتكم اليوم ان كيف ان انتم تلقون الحلول لان اليوم الصعوبات تزيد لكن ايش اللي في يدنا اليوم اللي في يدنا ان احنا نخلق هذه البطانه الصالحه اللي تشيل بعضها البعض نرسم هذه الروح نرسم هذه يعني البصمة اللي نبي نخليها خاصة خاصة ابنا أبي الناس يوم تشوف فلان وتسمع يتكلم يعرفون هناك في برنت موجود يربطنا كلنا اللغة واحدة التفكير واحد الهدف واحد والشغف يكون عالي وما يكسرنا اي شيء. فالله يوفقكم ان شاء الله. مشكورين. Then His Highness honored the strategic partners of the project and the supporting partners. His Highness also honored Lama participants who reached the challenges stage. Then His Highness Sheikh Nasser honored the winners of Lama Abdullah Keshfi from the Ministry of Works and Sousan Kadam from SICO Bank. 
His Highness congratulated the winners and stressed that all the finalists are an asset to their workplaces and a qualitative addition to Lama Association and the youth sector. The first Deputy Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, Chairman of the General Sports Authority and President of Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Khaled bin Hamad Al Khalifa, received the National Paralympic teams, who won 36 colorful medals at the 4th West Asian Para Games, recently held in Sharjah. Also present were GSA Vice Chairman His Highness Sheikh Salman bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, the President of the Paralympic Committee Sheikh Mohammed bin Adaij Al Khalifa, GSA CEO Dr. Abdul Rahman Askar, President of Bahrain Sports Federation for Disabilities Sheikh Sultan bin Adaij Al Khalifa, the Secretary General of Paralympic Committee Ali Al Majid, and a number of senior officials and attendees. His Highness affirmed that the people of Bahrain always turn challenges into success stories and achievements. He held the Paralympic Committee for winning 10 gold medals, 7 silver medals, and 19 bronze. His Highness affirmed that these achievements reflect the support received by the sports movement in general and the Paralympic movement in particular by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and His, his Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa and His Majesty the King's Representative for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa. His Highness congratulated the Paralympic Committee and noted that these achievements affirms the, their readiness and ability. Sheikh Khalid also affirmed to continue enhancing the progress of the Bahraini Paralympic movement. The Representatives' Council held its weekly session presided over by its Speaker Ahmed Lim During the session, the Minister of Parliament Affairs was asked a number of questions regarding the number of beneficiaries of employment support programs, career development support programs, enterprise support programs, and a number of foreign companies of part-time owned for foreigners that received support from Timki. The session reviewed a number of reports by the Public Utilities and Environment Committee on a draft law regulating fishing, exploitation and protection of marine wealth. The Council approved a number of proposals on expanding the application of alternative penalties by increasing the number of requests to replace the penalty and imposing s special standards for permitting the delivery profession on foreign workers. The Speaker of the Representatives Council, Ahmed Lim Salam, affirmed that all national achievements are thanks to the royal vision of His Majesty the King and his keenness to achieve developments in all fields. He praised the directors of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister to hold consultations with the legislative authority and the private sector to plan the Bahrain Economic Vision 2050. He also praised His Royal Highness's directors to evaluate what has been achieved for the 2030 goals and keep enhancing these achievements for the benefit of the country and its people. He expressed pride in the people of Bahrain, represented by Team Bahrain who always strive for success in all fields. The chairman of the Shura Council, Ali Saleh, affirmed that all national achievements are thanks to the royal vision of His Majesty the King and his keenness to achieve developments in all fields. He praised the directors of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister to hold consultations with the legislative authority and the private sector to plan the Bahrain Economic Vision 2050. He also praised His Royal Highness's directors to evaluate what has been achieved for the 2030 goals and keep enhancing these achievements for the benefit of the country and its people. He expressed pride in the people of Bahrain, represented in Team Bahrain, who always strive for success in all fields.
His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa deputized the Deputy Prime Minister Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa to inaugurate the first Arab Forum for Consumer Protection. The forum is hosted by the Ministry of Industry and Commerce in cooperation and coordination with the United Nations Economic and Social Commission for Western Asia and representatives of the United Nations Conference on Trade and Development. Sheikh Khalid affirmed that Bahrain, under the leadership of the of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and the follow-up of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, has strengthened its commercial and economic system with a package of solid national legislation and clear mechanisms that resulted in the creation of consumer markets characterized by trust and transparency in their dealings. The Deputy Prime Minister pointed out that the consumer protection is a global and participatory matter, noting that in addition to the executive and legislative authorities' responsibility in creating the legal framework and following up on its implementation, civil society institutions also have the role of raising awareness and educating the consumer public. He praised the initiative of the Industry Ministry to launch this forum in cooperation and coordination with the relevant international committees, coinciding with the celebration of the Arab World Consumer Protection Days with the aim of increasing efforts to improve the governance of the consumer protection system in the Arab region in line with the goals of sustainable development and promoting responsible commercial and consumer practices guided by international best practices. Sheikh Khalid wished those in charge of the forum success in noting practical recommendations that would contribute to developing policies and translating the aspirations of consumers in the region to provide a sustainable business climate. For his part, the Minister of Industry, Abdullah bin Adil Fakhro, extended his thanks and gratitude to His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister's patronage for the event, appreciating the Deputy Prime Minister for inaugurating the forum. The minister stressed that hosting this forum in Bahrain demonstrated status and economic leadership by adopting promising initiatives and translating ambitious visions into tangible reality. Then the Deputy Prime Minister honored the forum's supporters and sponsors. The Chairman of the Supreme Council of Health, Lieutenant General Dr. Sheikh Mohammed bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, attended the opening of the daily care unit for hereditary blood diseases for women at the Salmaniya Medical Complex in the presence of the Minister of Health, Dr. Jalila Hassan. The Chairman stressed the government's keenness to enhance efforts to provide high quality health services to various patients, which consolidates the position enjoyed by the health sector in the kingdom. The opening came after studying the needs of patients and to achieve privacy for them while receiving their treatment. The second edition of the Arab Consumer Protection Day celebration was launched under the slogan Arab Women and Consumer Protection. This came in the presence of the Minister of Industry and Commerce, Abdullah Fakhro, and the participation of a number of Bahraini society women from civil societies, university students, and an elite group of experts from the GCC and Arab countries. The minister affirmed that this distinguished initiative came in response to the recommendations of the 13th meeting of the working group of experts and specialists in the field of consumer protection within the framework of the Greater Arab Free Trade Area of the Arab League. He added that the first dialogue was held at the Arab level about the challenges and solutions centered around Arab women with regards to consumer practices. He affirmed the Kingdom's support for all future aspirations in the field of consumer protection at the Arab level. Bahrain Tourism and Exhibitions Authority signed an agreement with Bahrain Real Estate Investment Company Idama, the real estate of Bahrain Mumtalakat Holding Company, to manage and operate the Galali Coast Waterfront project, which is scheduled to open in the second quarter of 2024. Present were BTEA CEO Sarah Bahaji and CEO of Idama Christopher Calvert. Bahaji affirmed that this partnership comes within the framework of promoting integration between the tourism and real estate sectors, in line with the pillars of Bahrain's tourism strategy for the years 2022-2026. Calvert expressed pleasure in signing the agreement and noted its importance in supporting the sustainability of the tourism sector and diversifying its coastal components. He stressed Adama's keenness to invest its experience in management and operation of tourism facilities.
The directives to begin consultations to formulate Bahrain's economic vision 2050 came from His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister six years before the completion of the goals of Bahrain's economic vision 2030, which has witnessed numerous achievements thanks to the contribution of Team Bahrain. More on this report. Since the launch of the Bahrain Economic Vision 2030, the Kingdom of Bahrain has continued on an upward path in making numerous achievements that have made it the focus of the world's attention in overcoming many challenges. The Bahrain Economic Vision 2030 came to keep pace with the ambitions of His Majesty the King. The vision has been prepared, which aspires to guarantee every Bahraini security, stability, decent living and a sincere sense of justice, and by spreading integrity as an approach upon which the Renaissance is based, which guarantees progress and development. With the completion of the vision approaching, the recent meeting of the Economic Development Board confirmed what has been accomplished in the Kingdom since the beginning of the prosperous reign of His Majesty the King and after the National Action Charter, as statistics indicated numbers and results about the positive development the Kingdom has witnessed since 2002 to 2023. The stage of advanced preparation for the next phase is characterized by ambition and continuity, and based on the goals that have been achieved, His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister directed to begin conducting consultations to formulate Bahrain's economic vision 2050. These consultations will be with the legislative authority, the private sector, professional associations and civil society institutions within the framework of ensuring that the vision reflects the ambitions and aspirations of the Bahraini society. Bahrain International Circuit has announced a sellout of grandstand tickets for the 2024 Formula One Bahrain Grand Prix amid a growing number of fans. Tickets, including the additional 500 capacity that were released earlier this week, have completely sold out for the circuit's main Beyond Turn 1 University and Victory Grandstands. The BIC invites fans wishing to attend the region's biggest event to visit the ticketing center and reserve their seats for hospitality tickets only. This comes just days away from the start of the Formula One race on 29th February until the 2nd of March, a race that that marks the 20th anniversary of Formula One racing in Bahrain. Bahrain International Circuit, the home of motorsport in the Middle East and Winfield Racing School have announced their collaboration to launch a motorsport training program in the Middle East. The program aims to discover, train and evaluate young motorsport talent from across the Middle East and Asia. As BIC celebrates the 20th anniversary of Formula One racing, Bahrain has contributed significantly to the creation of the true motorsport culture in the region. In collaboration with Winfield Racing School, BIC intends to continue its efforts by promoting driving and motorsport skills to as many fans as possible. The Winfield Racing School and BIC will work together with the support of government agencies to develop a world-class education program to develop a world-class education program through a training center at Skhir Circuit that will develop the drivers and mechanics of the future.